I'm Kriti Gera from School of Design, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, presenting our paper titled The Context and Experience of Mobility Among Urban Marginalized Women in New Delhi, India. In the context of developing countries, transportation has an impact on practices related to gender, specifically to geographical mobility and social mobility of women, leading towards enhancement of overall quality of life. There have been voids left by public transportation system which are taken care of by bottom-up solution like informal modes of transport. The study takes a descriptive approach with the help of a pilot study and a relevant review of literature leading towards the findings uh, stating social aspects related to mobility. The aim of the study is to reveal the experience of mobility among urban marginalized women based on their marital status to understand the factors and motivations that enable their mobility. This understanding will be further used to analyze the social aspects related to spatial mobility of unmarried urban poor women to reveal the relationship between social and spatial mobility. The study is situated in New Delhi, which is the capital city of India, and it uh, basically focuses on the peripheral areas of Delhi, where the inhabitants uh, have mostly come from the neighboring cities of Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. The black dotted dark line uh, demarcates the extent of the public transportation system, which uh, clearly leaves out these urban peripheral areas. Delhi relies mostly on road-based transport uh, system where the private vehicles dominate the road. And it is because of the shifting land use patterns and changes in the local cultural and social culture that there have been changes in mobility patterns and change in aspirations of residents. These uh, situations uh, have led towards uh, keeping a particular social class of uh, Delhi away from the public bus system. Although the uh, informal modes of transport in Delhi are authorized by the government, still their characteristics are more similar to informal uh, categories such as adjustment and self-organization. They cater towards the travel requirements of the people using these modes. Also, it is seen that 80% passengers of these uh, modes are women belonging to varying age groups. According to Simone, in the context of developing countries, informality is an integral part of the lifestyle of its inhabitants. Trust is one of the most important factors that uh, symbolizes informality. Uh, for informal modes of transport, they, uh, their characteristics include economization, accessibility, interregional mobility, urbanization, and they also create space for personal uh, and social negotiations. They also help in creating new identities and uh, help in day-to-day -day displacement of people. The urban marginalized women uh, help to contribute towards the economic stability of their household by taking up some kind of jobs. And also in case of married women, they prefer working uh, in close proximity to their homes. Um, and uh, it is uh, seen that the scope and nature of reproductive work for women is often ignored since it, since, uh, it comes in the household work. Also, these women tend to self-exclude themselves from travel due to problems like poor frequency of buses, overcrowding, and sexual harassment. And this uh, situation um, uh, forces them to move towards inferior modes of transport. Besides informality, gender and mobility are the other two main aspects of this research. Uh, gendered mobility helps to investigate into hidden meanings of daily mobility of women. According to law, it helps to establish links between mobility and gender division of labor. According to Gupta, gender inequality and exclusions can be studied from three main perspectives, namely sociocultural, spatial, and economic. According to further Leva and Edling, the daily routine of working women is more complicated as compared to men, and it uh, involves unpredictability of travel time. Uh, also, uh, it demands some modes of transport that can cater to their flexible daily routine. All these factors lead towards uh, 
or these women adopting modes of transport that are slow and inferior as compared to public transportation system of the city. The research framework involved a multi-method approach of studying the daily mobilities of marginalized women living in the peripheral areas of Delhi like Sangam Bihar. Uh, in part one, the study uses document analysis uh, as a method to identify the characteristics of modes and patterns of these women in an Indian context. And the analysis was done using content analysis methods. Uh, the second part of the study adopted a combination of two complementary ethnographic methods like shadowing and using phone GPS in whichever case it was available. And for this study, uh, a preliminary socioeconomic survey was also conducted that revealed that not all participants were comfortable with writing or filling in forms. Uh, this could be because of their education level or lack of confidence. Hence, that the first step in formal interviews were conducted. Uh, with individual participants uh, to understand their daily travel patterns. For this, a traditional form uh, of uh, travel diary was used to record daily routines of participants. The purpose of travel diary was to get information on three levels, that is personal information, information related to family and demographic detail, and to understand their travel patterns throughout the day. The second step uh, of the study involved uh, adopting two different types of methods based on the availability and non-availability of smartphones. Uh, for uh, participants who had smartphone, uh, digital ethnography was used uh, as a method. Uh, an app called Open GPS Tracker was used. And for the other set of participants, shadowing was used as a method for tracking their path. The uh, data from these two methods was uh, collected and then mapped. It was then uh, interpretive, uh, it was then analyzed using interpretive analysis, which led to the findings and conclusions. For the pilot study, a total of five participants were studied. Out of these, two lived in Dakshinpuri, which is a squatter settlement close to Sangam Bihar, and all of the participants were working women between 20 to 55 years of age and belonged to low income group. Out of five, two were married and had the responsibility of taking care of their respective families. They were employed as part-time domestic helpers in the neighboring areas. The other three participants were unmarried and were working as beauticians in other affluent areas of Delhi. The current slide shows the travel pattern of one of the respondents who works as a domestic helper uh, in one of the posh areas of South Delhi. She uses walking along with informal modes of transport and then walks back again to her house, spending one and a half hours every day on her travel time to and fro, and spends about 6% of her monthly income on transportation. Respondent number two uh, works at a beauty salon, and uh, she again walks uh, till the junction where she takes an informal mode of transport. Then she interchanges into another informal mode of transport, which takes her to the interior of uh, the area where she lives. Then she has to again cover the last mile using walking. She spends nearly four hours every day uh, in her travel time with about 24% of her monthly income on transportation. She works at a beauty salon close to a commercial area and she lives in Sangam Bihar, which is an unauthorized colony. So in the morning, she walks up till the uh, junction near her house where she takes the informal mode of transport, which uh, helps her reach the uh, bus station where she takes the public transportation system, that is the bus, uh, which drops her near her work location and then she walks towards her work location. She spends about four hours every day traveling and about 36% of her monthly income on travel. Uh, this respondent uh, also works at a beauty salon in the same commercial area as earlier and uh, she is unmarried and she uh, interchanges uh, three times on one side, that is six times in a day to uh, reach to her work and back home. She spends about like more than three and a half hours uh, of travel time every day and her travel cost per month exceeds her monthly income. 
to understand their motivations, it was important to know about their daily distance travel, modes of travel, the number of interchanges, their monthly salary, and how much time and money they spend on travel every day. A contextual time use chart was also used to understand the total added time spent by them in traveling within a single day. The study revealed that um, married women use little or no money on their travel, uh, whereas unmarried women were willing to travel longer distances, spend more money and effort in order to get better opportunities. And the amount of money that they spent uh, on travel was between 6% to 36% of their monthly income. Time geography diagrams were prepared uh, to present an overview of the variation movements performed by respondents. The elementary events displayed here are travel, interchange, arrive, stay, and leave. The study believes that all respondents travel between 8 km to 30 km every day using some kind of informal modes of transport as one of the mediums of travel. And also their travel requirements uh, were based on their age group and the nature of their employment. Uh, during the afternoon, uh, the major users of informal modes were either non-working women who were performing various reproductive jobs or those who were working as part-time helpers or uh, were employed in some other informal sector. The study also revealed that unmarried women traveled larger distances, consuming more amount of time and as compared to married women. Also, they compromised on factors such as safety and convenience as they uh, used two to three interchanges uh, using multiple transport modes. Uh, married women were seen to be involved in work that did not demand greater than full day commitment, whereas contrary to this, unmarried women were employed in semi-informal sector that required them to work long hours. The study revealed that there was an impact of spatial mobility on the lives of these women, wherein uh, there was an impact on their identity and creation of social networks. Also, uh, unmarried women uh, made an effort to add to their skills by attending short-term short vacation courses, which enabled them to access um, better job opportunities with the help of informal modes of transport. Also, unmarried women spent more time and money on daily travel to access their jobs, which meant uh, a better investment uh, for their future. Although there have been changes in the thinking of people towards women equality, yet based on uh, this study and the social cultural background of this group, it cannot be denied that the better opportunities that they refer to are uh, referred to uh, marriage, which uh, in a way, according to them, uh, enhance their social and economic value. Also, uh, spatial mobility uh, does have an impact on the social mobility of women and it enhances the social mobility but within the close structure of their society and not uh, actual social mobility. The study reveals that there are four main factors that have an impact on the mobility of women. Uh, for unmarried women having access to better opportunities of employment by the means of informal modes of transport helps them fulfill their desires and create new identities. Also, uh, besides access, their ability to be able to move away and uh, escape from their local neighborhood is also found to be an important factor for enhancing their social status, but within their close structure. In case of married women, informal modes of transport uh, enable them to participate in productive activities and support their families economically. Although informal modes of transport, uh, that is spatial mobility, enables unmarried women to fulfill their own aspirations and to have an enhanced social status, but this is largely governed by the prevailing sociocultural factors that put marriage as the most important aim of parents of these women. The study reveals that spatial mobility does not always convert into social mobility, and there exists a gap between actual and potential movement of these women. These are the references.
thank you and I'm open for any questions.